we're going to look at ways to modify or add objects into the scene graph here in LOPS. Specifically, we're going to look at the SOP modify and the SOP create LOP. We'll start by looking at the SOP modify LOP, which is used to edit geometry in your scene. I'm going to put down a SOP modify here, plug this in, and it's going to ask us which primitives we would like to add in here. There's quite a lot here, and I'm not exactly sure which is going to be which. So what I can do is go here and select things as necessary. I want to make sure I'm selecting all the components I need and that I don't have anything else in here that I shouldn't. I think I might need these little black ones in here as well. Let me turn on visibility so only the visible objects get selected. Deselect that stuff. And let's go and select the other side here. All right, so I'm just trying to grab this section here. And maybe we'll grab the back as well. And some of these little odds and ends in here. A lot of little pieces I could probably just group select, drag select that way, since I do have that turned on. All right, so with those selected, I could just drag right into that primitive path there. And when I dive inside, what we'll see, if I have this hidden, so hide everything else here, if I show everything, we'll see the entire scene. I'm going to hide everything. So what we see are just the objects that we have selected up above. If I middle click here, what you'll see is that everything is a packed USD. Now we can tell it above that we would like to unpack everything into polygons. So if I choose that and I middle click here, you'll see now we have all the data that we need. Or I can keep that as it is and choose a unpack USD to polygons which basically does the same thing. Essentially what it's doing is it's copying the attributes that we need from the USD file back into our geometry. And then as we exit here, it should be coming back in here. There should be some stuff here about how the attributes are coming back in. Basically, you shouldn't have to do much. Just realize whether you need full geometry or just the USD geometry in here. So once your geometry is unpacked, we can make whichever modifications we want. I'm going to go on to wireframe here. And we'll select all of these points and try not to get those little indentation points in there. So we'll select that. And we'll do a nice little edit where, say, we extend the front like that. And then we'll select the ones on the back. We'll extend the back a little bit. So what we've done is just modify the shape of that torso part. So there you go, you see exactly what that does. Essentially, it allows you to unpack the USD files, do the changes that you need to make, and then have it come back into the scene as if there weren't any real issues going back and forth between USD, Sopland, and back to USD. So a nice little convenience node there. Now let's take a look at Sop Create. We're going to create a cloth simulation for this mech to interact with. We'll start by putting down a SOP create. 
what you'll notice is that we get a new object here in our scene graph. The name coming from the import path prefix there, we can change it in here or we can just change the operator name here. I'm going to call that cloth and we'll dive right inside. So we can start by making a grid. That's going to be our cloth. I'm going to make that a five by five grid and rows will do two by two. And then we'll need colliders for that to interact with. So we'll do a lop import for that. The lop path is going to be our stage and we'll choose relative for that. And then the primitives, we want the mech geo and the ground geo. So I'm going to select the geos of both of those and drag them into the primitive path here. Now they're not animated, they're static. So I'm going to choose static on here. We could choose the frame that we wanted, but frame one is fine. One thing to know is if I highlight this, uh, what we'll see when we middle click here is that we're getting packed USDs and we're not going to be able to simulate with those because we need actual geometry. So we will have to unpack the USDs to polygons. All right, now we have some stuff to interact with. So we will template that and we will move our grid up above the mech, let's say three units. Now let's get ready to simulate it. We'll start by remeshing it. I'm going to make it fairly dense mesh. And we'll use a vellum cloth configure. Plug that into here and I'm just going to make it uniform for our mass. And then do a vellum solver. So we'll plug these in and then the collider in the third input. I'm going to put down an output right here, and now we can play it. Now I'm going to show you a little trick you might not know, by the way. If you don't want to see this in wireframe when it's templated, one thing you can do is go to your display and change your template model geometry into whichever one of these you want. I'll say smooth shaded, and you can turn off ghosted. And fade it if you want. Now you should actually have a much better view of what's happening there. So we'll let this play through a little bit. You can see that my cache is running out there. So I'm going to go into my simulation and we'll just add a zero into the cache memory. So at this point, if you didn't want to keep this live here, you would just write this information out to disk and read it right back in. Or you could cache it out from the LOPS context up above. For now, this is just for demonstration purposes, so I'm not going to go through that step, but it's something to think about for later. All right, so we've got our geo, we've got our simulation, and we've successfully added an object to interact with our LOP scene. And you can see it's part of the scene graph here. We have a special mesh that's been output. We didn't give this a name, so it just gets the default name of mesh zero, but we have all the other interactivity that we need here.